Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is 18th lecture of this graph theory series part 1. And in this lecture we are going to see how we will apply def first search that is DFS on, uh, on a grid. So before we start the lecture, let's see what are the similarities between, DF, uh, between a graph and a grid. You see in a graph we have nodes, right? Same way in the grid we have cell cells are like nodes in the graph now a uh, graph also have edges so what are edges in case of grids because if cells are cells are nodes they must be connected or dis disconnected so there must be edges so what are edges so there are two different kinds of edges uh, depending upon the problem statement in the problem statement it will be specifically mentioned some of the edges are considered the uh, the sides of the cell is considered to be an edge and two cells are said to be connected if they share a same uh, a same side so for example this and this these two cells are sharing this side so these two cells are said to be connected by an edge similarly this and this this and this this and this for this there are two connections uh, left and down so the cells are considered to be nodes and edges are considered to be sides and in some problems they will be mentioning that sides, uh, sides are edges as well as corners so if two cells are sharing a corner that means they are connected by an edge too so for example this and this are sharing this corner this and this cells uh, these two cells are not sharing any edge but any common edge they do not have any common edge but they have a common corner so sometimes what happens they tell you that okay sides are equal to edges that means if two cells are said to be connected if they share a common side and in some problem statement you will find that they'll tell you that two sides are said to be connected either they share a side or share a corner so these two important things are there to be considered before we start dfs on grid so a cell in a grid is considered to be a node and edge are either side or corner so before we see how dfs works on 2d grid let's see how dfs works on a graph so see how dfs works is that you have node and whenever you reach a node this is a simple dfs i am assuming that you already have watched uh, dfs bfs and the previous lecture since this is the this is a course and this is 18th lecture so it it is required to uh, require you to watch the previous lectures as well so you have idea because i'll be mentioning some of the things that, that i have already discussed in past lectures so of course you must have idea about that so this is simple dfs code what happens whenever you reach certain node you mark that node as visited so red is a kind of visit mark of visited after that in the adjacency list of current node you would uh, you would see every single node which is connected to current node and if that node is not visited that means you would make a dfs call to that node for example if you reach this node what you would do you would mark it as visited and in the adjacency list of this node this and these these two nodes are connected so you see whether this node is uh, uh, whether this node is visited or not this is where you are checking that and if this is not visited you would make a dfs call to that similarly after dfs call of this node is completed you will see whether this node this is also in your uh, adjacency list of course so you will see whether this node is visited or not and then if it is not visited you would make a dfs call to that and as simple as that this is how dfs works in normal graph if i show you how dfs work on grid this is really easy uh see in even though you may see that okay the uh the code is uh, lengthy in case of grid but it, it is uh, shorter in case of uh, in case of normal graph and still I'm saying that this is easy because there is surety of some things let me tell you what first thing you do do not know whether how many nodes are there in the adjacency list of uh, any node and that is why we have to run a for loop because there uh, it is not constant it may vary the number of nodes can be one in the adjacency list of certain nodes and the number of nodes in certain nodes sorry number of nodes in the adjacency list of certain nodes may be 100 as well depending about the of course the graph but here we only uh, we know that okay if sides are described as edges then there are only four possible connections 
for this node that uh, in the adjacency list of this node this 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 and this these four nodes are directly connected to it so you would make four recursive calls up right down and left similarly same is true for every single cell in the given grid first important thing each node can be uniquely specified by a node number like this uh, if there are 10 nodes we usually go with node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 these uh, we use as specifier but in case of grid, grid you uh, if the grid is of size n cross m then for each cell the unique specifier is the number of row and number of column so if I'm talking about 2 1 that means I'm talking about this cell because this is in the second row and the first column so for each uh, for each node we need to uh, we need its row number and column number uh, unlike in the normal DFS where we only need a node number so what you would do you would mark it as visited as you can see as the first thing you did uh, the first thing you would do is mark the current node as visited so if you reach certain cell you would mark that cell as visited after that you already know that there are only four possible connection in this case where we are assuming that common edges are considered a uh, common uh, common uh, sites are considered to be edges so we have four different nodes uh, we have four different cells which we are connected to so we'll see whether I can go up or not so going up means going uh, from x y going to x minus 1 y at cell so first you will check whether it is valid or not what is is valid is valid is a function that will return whether the node you want to go actually exist or not so for example from here I wanted to go up but there is no cell which is directly above this node so it will return true or false based on two factors first it will check whether the cell you want to go even exist or not if the cell doesn't exist it will return false otherwise it will say check in, check for the second condition that is whether that node is visited or not like this thing so I will try to go up so is valid check will check whether the node whether the cell directly above the current cell exists or not if not it would return false if it returns false I cannot make this DFS call of course right if it uh, otherwise if the cell exists is valid we check for the second condition that is if uh, whether the cell you want to go actually is visited or not if that is not visited it would return true so you can make DFS call to up similarly for right down or left this is how DFS works in 2d grid if I show you example, suppose we made a DFS call to cell 11. So you mark the cell 11 as well uh, uh, visited and blue color shows you the status of visited or unvisited. Blue is visited, the rest, uh, the white colored cells are unvisited. So you try to go up. So is, is valid function will return false because there is no node, there is no cell directly above you. So it would return false. Now you try to go right. Yes, you can go right because uh, the, the cell on the right actually exists as well as it is unvisited. So from there, you would make a DFS call to cell 2-1, uh, not 2-1, I guess it is 1-2. So you would make a DFS call to 1-2. Now this indicates that from this cell, you made a DFS call and you made a second operation. Second operation means going right. When we come back, from DFS when DFS call of this node as uh, is completed so you would come back and then you would continue your operation so you were at this point at second operation so you would go to perform this and this that is why there is two to indicate the last performed action so you are at this node here you try to do again the same thing you uh, you would mark as visited so this is blue you try to go up but that's not possible you try to, uh, you try to go right so from one two you would move on to one three 13 cell will try to go and the last perform action was 2 because we went to right and 1 2 when you reach 1 2 you'd mark it as visited you try to go up that's not possible that cell doesn't exist you try to go right that is not possible the right cell doesn't exist so you try to go down yes that cell exists and as well as it is not visited so you'd make uh, you'd perform third operation and you basically you made dfs uh, call to down cell so you are here similarly everything will be performed here 
now from here you would go down you try to go up not spot not possible you try to go right not possible you you try to go down not possible you try to go left that is possible so you'd make a dfs call to left which is fourth operation so fourth operation is performed this is just to show you the what was the last operation performed so that we can continue uh, from there when we come back from dfs call similarly from here you try to go up that is possible because up cell exists as well as it is not visited so you you would come here you try to go up left and right all of three are not possible so check for left oh sorry up right and down all of these three are not possible for this cell because up is visited uh, right is visited down is visited only option is to go left because uh, this is the fourth operation so you'd perform the fourth oh sorry so you'd perform the fourth operation similarly for this node you try to go up not possible right not possible down yes that is possible so you make a dfs call to down cell and this cell will try to go up not possible right not possible down not possible left not possible so this node uh, from this cell you directly return to the cell which has made dfs call to this and that means we will return to this cell similarly from here you will return uh, last operation you perform was this so you would continue your code from there so you try to go left that is not possible because left node is already positive uh, sorry visited that is why your work here is completed so you would return to the cell which has made dfs call to you so you basically you return to this similarly everything will happen and every node will simply return to the cell which made dfs call to them so the order was order of visit visited uh order of visit was one 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 two one three two three 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 and so on let me show you just just let me show you the code so this is the code i hope this is visible so you see in the in the main function we are only reading nnm that is number of nodes and uh, sorry number of rows and number of columns after that we are making a dfs call to node one or uh, cell one one after that uh this is visited array to store the status of each cell whether that uh, cell is visited or not uh is valid function here will take two parameters x and y and we are assuming all of the rows are numbered from 1 to n and one or uh, all of the columns are numbered 1 to m so if you want to go a uh, row which is smaller than 1 and if or if you want to go a uh, row which is greater than n that means you are going outside the grid that that means you will return false similarly for y and if this condition does hold doesn't hold that means you are going to a cell which actually exists that means you would see whether the cell is visited or not uh, if that is already visited you would again return true uh, sorry you would return false that means you can't visit the cell you are requesting for and if these two condition doesn't hold that means you can simply return true that means that cell exists as well as that is not visited so you are returning true and in the dfs function uh, you are marking at visited you are trying to go up right left and down or uh, depending upon is valid function status of invalid function so if i show you if i go for three cross three you see we went to let me show you if you remember from one one we went to one two and then one three then two three 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 two 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 one and three one this was our order of execution the order of execution may change like the dfs as you may already know that order of dfs may change depending upon the way you are calling a uh, recursive dfs function calls now this can be done in a smooth way instead of writing four different conditions, you may think okay where we have a uh, a condition where corners are also considered as edges that in that case you would have to write eight different conditions of is valid well that is not very true what you can do is a better way to do it is create a dx array which will define your x direction and you see if you want to go up you are decreasing one from x so basically you are adding minus one to x then the next call was to go right in that case you are adding nothing in x so zero similarly for down you are adding one to x so one this is i'm, I'm creating an array and then if you want to go left you are adding nothing in x so zero now similarly for dy change in y so when you wanted to go uh this was for up i guess when you wanted to go up you added nothing in y so zero when you wanted to go right you added one in y that is why 
1 when you wanted to go down you added 0 in y when you want, wanted to go left you added minus 1 in y after that what you can do instead of writing all this let me just comment it out you can write two or three lines of code let me show you from here since you have four different directions so run a loop from 0 to uh, 3 because 0 1 2 and 3 these are all of your uh, possible direction so if is valid x plus dx of i and y plus dy of i if that is true that means you would make a dfs call to x plus dx of i and y plus dy of i that's all instead of writing whole this code you can define the direction and remember uh, this was uh, min we added minus one when we go uh, we when we wanted to go up right and we added zero because uh, zero in y because we wanted to go up so these two must match this is what you did in x when you wanted to go up this should be also what you do uh, what you did in x uh, sorry in y when you wanted to go up so these two combine define your your going up these two combine define you're going down uh, right these two combine define you're going down and these two define uh, going left so you can do this and the code still will run fine so you see we have reduced the code quite a quite a bit now if i show you the comp compile and again if we run a dfs for three cross three we'll see there is no change unless i made some errors come on yes so let's run for three cross three you see one 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 two one three two three 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 two 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 one and three one which means it is running fine so this is how you apply dfs on 2d grid in the next in the next lecture uh, in the next lecture we will see how dfs is used to count the connected component even uh, in a given 2d grid and we will use of course dfs that we have just studied so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you